Hey guys, this is the Avenge44 doing yet another random stack of comics video. Um, first off, I've got uh, Brave and the Bold, Command Eye versus well, Command of the Bold featuring Batman and Command Eye, number 120. This is one of those, this is one of those classic um, pre-crisis kind of like crossover comics. Um, yeah, like apparently somehow Batman goes to the future and teams up with Command Eye, whatever. And I really love the art on this cover. It's really nice. I, I always, I'm a, I'm a big sucker for the Brave and the Bold art, especially like this time period of the Brave and the Bold. They had this. I, w I should just. I, sh I really should look up this, this artist's name because I really love his style. And you can always tell when it's this, it's this particular artist because his covers always had a, a distinct look to them. Uh, we have Iron Man 183 next. This is just classic um, 80s Iron Man. I really like, this is another art style I really like, this is, the, 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 a lot of the Iron Man covers in this time period were really cool. Uh, this is like this, this is like the same time period that, um, you know, they had the whole Demon in the Bottle storyline. I just, I like them. Um, yeah. Next up, we have the JLA Presents Plastic Man number one. This is just like a one-shot special, basically, um, 38-page special comic dedicated to Plastic Man. It, it basically just has, it basically just has a bunch of different stories. It's got like a, it's got like a retelling of his origin story, then it's got like three or four, like a one central original story, then it's got like a, and then it's got a bunch of little comical tidbits, like a, a fake interview for the, for the, like a fake Plastic movie that was made in the 70s. It's actually pretty funny, and there's, there's some, com, there's some fake commercials in there, and it's a lot of good stuff. A lot of very comical comic, especially, I mean, Plastic Man is one of my all-time favorite characters. And uh, I had to get this. Well, I got this a long time ago when I was little. That's why I, if you can, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lot of damage to the comic. The spine's all messed up, and uh, there's a lot of cracks in the, the cracks in it. It was very well read, very well read. Next up, we have Superman Avengers number 34 from the. Uh, it's uh, basically the uh, cartoon version of Superman from the, cart from the Superman cartoon. They made a comic adaptation. Um, these. Comic book companies always do this. They always take these popular cartoons based off their characters and then make another comic book based off their character that's based off of their your character. Uh, I guess it works because they always do these and they sell. This is basically like a, this is this is like a story where Superman is captured by uh, not is taken over by some demon or something. And Doctor Fate has to fight him. It's pretty cool. Next up we have Flash number twenty. This is a, yet another com another comic book series that I really liked. Uh, I, re I really, I really, first of all, I really enjoyed the art in these covers and in the story. Like this, the art for the early, for the, the art for the early post post crisis um, Flash stories are really good. Plus, the storylines is good because this is like uh, I think kid, you know, Wally was he got in, he got hurt during the crisis. He got he like he did something. I think he ran he ran really really fast and used up a lot of his energy and power. So he wasn't. So when he came back and after, so when this comic started, he was a lot weaker. He only had like, only had a little bit of his power left, you know, a little bit of speed. So he was very limited in what he could do. And I like I just like those stories because it made it made for better writing because you know he was not as fast as, as he wasn't godlike speed. And also there's another issue on the back, um, Flash Number Seven. I normally don't. This must be a really old comic because I, I don't I try not to do this too much anymore. I don't I try not to put back to front cover comics anymore. It makes it more confusing. Especially when you're trying to organize, you do it back. Especially if they're not even the same series. I've had comics where there was like a Blue Beetle on one side and like a Batman on the other side. It's just it was stupid. Next up, we have Dennis the Menace number 13. Um, basically, just like a looks like a, maybe an early, maybe a 70s or 80s um, Marvel, one of Marvel's cash cow, prop, you know, licensed comics that were really probably not any good. Uh, I don't even know why I have this. I don't. This is not my. This is not the kind of comics I like. Um, this is this is probably something that somebody gave me or a bought. Uh, I bought from somebody that, that had a lot of comics. So every every once in a while, I'll, I'll pick up a big stack of comics from somewhere. And, you know, this, I think this is one of the ones that was in one of those piles. Next up, we have Blackhawks or Black Hawk number two hundred twenty-one. Um, this is nice old Silver Age. Blackhawks issue. It's um, it's from the 70s. It's from the 70s. Whenever they went to try to um, revamp the Blackhawks, give them like new uniforms and have them 
give them more supernatural stories. Because before they were just like, a, like you know, wartime heroes, and now in this comic series, they're always in this era, they're always fighting weird aliens and stupid, you know, crazy shit. Um, I bought this from a flea market in Texas not too long ago, and um, not a flea market, a trade show, whatever. And the guy who was selling them, he had he had a bunch of old comics in a box, but the, but as a collector, it was so sad to see it because all the comics were just tore up and no covers and which had no collecting value. This was like one of the few comics that was in decent shape. I mean, it's really not even in good shape. There's a big piece of the cover that's tore off. I mean, it's, there's a big piece of the cover that if you take the bag out, it, it falls, the page part falls out. So it's basically being attacked by the cover. But I just felt like I had, I, I wanted to buy something from the guy. And this is this is the most, this is the only comic that was in even decent shape. Uh, next up, we have Vengeance Lantley, number oh, oh number fifteen. Yeah, this is um, Lantley was a character that was I think that was originally I don't know that much about the character, but I think he was a character that was created for the Teen Titans, and then he was given his own comic book. It's done by Marty Wolfman, who was the guy who basically revamped the Teen Titans and made them popular in the seventies or eighties. Uh, I just like this comic. This is another comic I got part of. I got like I have a little collection or something. I probably off of one of those random comic book lots of eBay. I'll buy those every once in a while. Um, I like the cover because it's, you know, it's some generic clown and he's like, this ain't no joke, you're dead, I mean, it's just funny. And, uh, next up, this is a comic I found in one of my long boxes that, of, like, some comics from when I was younger, like, you know, maybe five, ten years back, and it, I don't know if you can tell, but the comics in that, a lot of the comics in that long box, it wasn't full, so a lot of the comics get collapsed on each other, which I don't know if any of this ever happens to you guys, but when comics collapse in a long box, it sucks, because a lot of them get bent up and messed up. And this comic is very, very, very bent. Um, but, I really love the cover. This is an awesome cover that I really enjoy. Um, I just like that. I just like how it's, Batman is so isolated and alone in this cover. It's great. Because you really don't see the Dark Knight like that, that alone, that that we can, you know, catch it. And last up, we have um, Fantastic Four number 75 of the original run. I recently picked this up in my comic book shop. Um, I paid a, I paid a nice little penny for it, but it, I mean, it's a great comic. It's a nice old old school Silver Age comic. It's in really good shape. Um, I'd probably give this a, like I'd probably give this a um, very fine or to um, to near mint maybe, maybe near mint's probably getting probably wishing too much, but definitely a very fine comic here. Um, this is one of the early appearances of Galactus. I think it was like his second or third appearance. So definitely a nice comic to have. And I also really love the red background. I'm a sucker for comics that have like a bright, vibrant background color. Yeah. There's too many comics are just white or black backgrounds, but those red, blue, or multicolor ones are always cool. Next up, we have um, this is some free comic book day comic that's in a stack. Uh, Blackest Night. I like the cover. It's got all those different multiple colors in it. And like I just said, I like I like multiple color backgrounds. And stuff. So I find something else to look at. The little bit of time I have left in this video. My videos are always set up for 10 minutes, so I like to try to burn, ease it all. If I can find something to look at. Oh, here we go. This is an old, um, Maze of Spider-Man number 16. This should really be in a bag and board, but I just don't have any Silver Age boards right now. I mean, bags right now to put it in. Uh, I like the, I like this cover. You know, it's one of the few appearances of the Spider-Mobile that was like a little, little known thing they had in the certain Silver Age Spider-Man. I think Human Torch makes it for him or gives him to him. Next up we have Spidey, Spidey Super Stories number 23. Uh, from the Electric Company printed this apparently. This is weird. I One one day, a couple years back, I was walking in Toys R Us, which just for something. I think I was with my parents or something. And I just... I came across a stack of comic books, and it was all it was all these little bags of like three or four comics in a bag, you know, sealed up, and it was a bunch of really old comics being sold in Toys R Us. It was the weirdest thing, um, but I went ahead and bought one. And this was this is the comic. Well, it looks like I'm running out of time, guys. So thank you for watching.